Hey, what's going on guys? So I'm currently on my way to central London to record the next episode of our podcast, The Motto. Uh, now our guest today is somebody that I met quite a few years ago on the night out in Newcastle. Um, and uh, since then, I've got to know her a little bit better. She's a really interesting person. Um, I am of course talking about the Geordie Lass, Vicky Patterson. Now a lot is written about Vicky um, in the press every single day. Uh, So it'd be good to find out the actual truth about the things that people write about her. You know, stuff like body image, um, beef of old housemates, and of course her upcoming wedding as well. So you know what to do, subscribe, give us a like, and leave us a comment. Enjoy. All right, so Vix, welcome to The Motto. How are you? I'm really good, thank you. How are you? I'm really good, man. I'm really good. Do you know what? Like, went to get you downstairs in the lobby in the hotel, and I was, like, looking around for us, expecting, like, a big entourage, <laughs> hairstylist, makeup artist, like, PR person. No, just Vix is sitting there with her bag, on her phone, just like, yeah, let's do this. Let's go. Love that. <laughs> Maybe little park, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Is that how you roll, though? Like, when you're, just, when you're doing stuff that's, like, not, you know, out of the public eye, do you just, like, just normal? Eat? Um, yeah, I mean, to be honest with you, if I don't have to be on telly or be somewhere serious, like where there's going to be loads of people and loads of cameras, I really don't want to wear any makeup. Yeah. I don't want to be with anybody else. I just want to be on my own, in my trackies, just chilling out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just feel like otherwise I'll just overcomplicate things yeah. and come across as a bit of a knob. And I don't want to ever be a knob. You don't. You never come across as a knob. I think there's a thin line. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Vix, I want to go back to 2011. So that's the first time I remember meeting you. I was actually with James at the time. We were up. We were in Newcastle for some reason or another. I, can't remember, I right. remember this. Do you remember this? I remember this. And we bumped into you filming. You guys were filming for Geordie Shaw. And we were in a club. I can't remember the name. Barnes, do you remember the name of the club? It's called Riverside. Riverside. There you go. Riverside. There you go. And um, I'd never seen you before. I'd never met you before, but I obviously knew who you were and we'd, we were still kind of doing MTV stuff as well. And I kind of just saw you from across the room and you, you kind of just looked over and went, all right? And I was, I was, I was like, I was like she's, she's a proper girl. She's a proper, proper girl. Do you remember that then? I can remember it all. We, um, we were literally, I think it must have been my first series. I think it was, yeah. And it was all so new to us. We had zero clue what we were getting ourselves into what we were about to be propelled into, for that matter. Yeah. And we were just really naive and very excitable. Yeah. I think that's probably the best But thing. you would be, though, like, you know, film crew from MTV is going to take you out it. clubbing, drinking. Drinks on them, like, cameras everywhere, everyone looking at you. And it, it was it was alien, but it was very, very exciting. And we hadn't heard much. We were kept pretty much in a bit of a bubble. Yeah. Um, no phones, no magazines. That's how filament always was yeah. from the very start. So you don't know what everyone's saying about you outside. But someone from MTV had sort of let slip that Ricky and Melvin were very excited about like meeting with all the show or something. <laughs> and I remember seeing he's in there and to us, you were just like the biggest celebs ever. And we were like, oh my God, they know who we are. It was, it was a major buzz for That's us. That's crazy. Big moment. What's the process like to actually getting on the show? Because I think a lot of people might not realise that, you know, it's quite, it's quite a lot of, a lot, a lot of like a, rigmarole to kind of get on the show. Oh, aye. It's not a walk in the park. I don't know. I think people must just assume that, like, you're out walking one day, you get spotted. Like, it's not like that. Like, they... So, back in the day, off straight off the back of the success of Jersey Shore, MTV yeah. wanted to create the UK version. Yeah. Jersey Shore was, like, in America, so yep. on the Jersey Shore, obviously. Exactly. Yeah. And they spotted a gap in the market for that. Um, I think it was on the precipice of reality TV coming back in a massive way. Yeah. Um, what is it? Made in Chelsea just started. Yep. Towie was getting big, <clears throat> so they they packed up their bags and sent some casting directors off to I don't know I don't think many people know this, but off to Liverpool and Newcastle. Right. They couldn't decide. It was either going to be Mersey Shore or Geordie Shore. Right. Okay. Um, in the end, they went with Newcastle. I think they felt that the people up there had a certain warmth and relatability that would would work. Yeah. Um, and at the time, I was working, I just graduated uni, 
was working in bars and nightclubs. Really? On the rope, yeah. I was the door whore. Was you? <laughs> <laughs> Clipboard. <laughs> Clipboard, pen, no smile. That was me. <laughs> if anyone wasn't on the list, you weren't getting it. Um, so they came up and they needed tables in all of the sort of nightclubs and bars um, in order to spot their but their prey, if you will, who yeah. they thought was going to be yeah. a good face, like a bit of a character or whatever. Um, so every night they'd come in. I worked different nightclubs, pretty much the most popular one of the night every week I was there. So I'd sort them out a table, I'd look after them, and I basically just became their first port of call. Right. I'd be like, well, what do you think of him? And I'd be like, he talks a good game, but he can't pull a muscle. <laughs> <laughs> or what about her? I'd be like, she can't well, like a granny on ice skates. <laughs> or uh, what about her? Actually, I don't know what she's even doing in here. She's 16. Like, right, literally okay. just giving them a sort of a local's perspective. Yeah, and I yeah. thought I was playing to our guide. But they were they were sort of trying to get me to come on. Right. They were lining you up about you. They were. It. it was divine invention. I had no <laughs> idea. Um, but like I say, the only way is Essex and Maiden Chelsea had started. And initially, I don't know if you can remember, it wasn't the most positive reaction to shows like that. Yeah. It was very controversial. Yeah. Um, and I was a little bit like, when they first asked us, I'm not sure if it's for me. Yeah. I've, I've got a degree. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> do you know what I mean? No, yeah, like, definitely. And there was things I wanted to do and places I wanted to see. And I just didn't know where Geordie Show would fit in. Had you been affected by, not affected, but like you were aware of shows like, you know, Big Brother and, you know, all the other shows and stuff. And how reality TV stars could kind of be perceived maybe or was I that think, in your head? I think, m- m- I think the more current stuff was definitely playing on my mind. Like... Poor people like Amy Childs and Mark Wright, like, yeah. look at their success now. Yeah. But back in the day, people were very scornful about them. And it was so it was so much easier to take the mick out of them or look down your nose at them than it was to to recognise their capabilities. Yeah. Yeah. And I think I, I'm embarrassed to say now, I probably fell into that majority of people who just sort of thought, you're putting your whole life out there, like, what are you doing? You're... I didn't I didn't see a different side. Yeah. I didn't think I could just go on and be myself. I just thought, thought, oh, you have to act like one specific way and I don't know if it's for me. And Newcastle was up in arms about the show anyway. The well, whole it's... city was furious. <laughs> <laughs> they got together, they had a meeting. <laughs> Cheryl came, she was livid. <laughs> no, I, I mean, it, 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 I think we're very precious and we're very proud as, as a region. Mm. And, and everyone sort of thought they're gonna, we're going to, I don't know, unearth the secrets of Newcastle or something or show yeah. in a bad light, which, of course, was never anybody's intention, but... I think there was a lot of whisperings anyway. I wasn't keen. And they kept saying, come on, do you not fancy it? And I was like, no, I really don't. Yeah. I believe at one point when they really pushed, I said, listen, I'd rather watch my dad get out the bath. <laughs> and at this, the, the people at MTV still remind me of that now. They're like, mm. <laughs> And I'm like, yeah, I'm sorry, I take it back. Um, and it all happened, so Volcano ahead on one night out. Um, and I'd got to know all the cast and directors put her on first name terms. And funnily enough, I was in Riverside where me and you first met. Really? And I went bombing in with all my mates, like 20, 20 strong female squad crew. Like, it was so good. Those were the days before, like, mortgages and marriage. <laughs> and we were, like, having a laugh and dancing and everything. And I spotted one of the cast and directors at the bar. And he was um, standing on his own. Um, and I'll always remember him because I called him Eddie Dragon Nostrils because he had massive nostrils. Dragon Nostrils, Dragon yeah. nostrils Eddie Dragon Nostrils. <laughs> and he was ha- having a drink on his own. And I went over and I was like, are you out on your own? He was like, no, 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 I'm working. I was like, well, to everyone else, it looks like you're out on your own. <laughs> I was like, come and stand with us. He was like, no, 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 honestly, honestly, you've got to be on the ball. Well, within half an hour, we had him like down in Jaeger bombs, in the DJ box, like <laughs> causing absolute mayhem. And I'm sure, as you can tell by the way I'm telling this story, I'm quite animated. Yeah, yeah. So I was telling him a story, obviously putting a shift in, showing off a little bit, being like, and then she said this, and then this happened. <laughs> and and um, as I was telling the story, I knocked a drink on a girl, um, and she had a white dress on. And it was like a big pink pint of like Skittles or something, no. and it just went all up her dress. No. Like, in a hair everywhere and she was just dripping standing there and I was like (laughs) (laughs) check please (laughs) so awkward so awkward and she just started kicking off I mean this is Newcastle this was Saturday night everyone had had a skin full and she's like yeah fucking just throw a drink on me and I'm like (laughs) so I'm like listen I'm really sorry it was unintentional like I mean trying to put in a good like trying to pretty good impression on this man regardless whether I want to be on the show or not he was new and you don't go acting like that in front of brand new people do you yeah 
So my mates are all like, get her telt, get her telt, Vicky, you're not going to let her talk to you like that. And I was like, oh my God, I'm really, I'm really conflicted. Peer pressure, peer yeah, pressure. I'm really conflicted. So I was like trying my best. So he was just like, Vicky, leave it, come on, let's go somewhere else, let's go somewhere else. So I was like, okay, fine, no bother. As I was turning and she was still kicking off, she was like, yeah, that's right, walk away. Oh, no. And I was like, walk away. Blood boiling. Yeah, literally, she was like, she called us a name. What's she called you? You can say. Can I? Can she say. was like, walk away, little slag. No and I was way. Like, now that's just n- unnecessary. <laughs> so I turned straight around and everyone was like, yes, Vicky. He was like so scared you could tell, like, what is she capable of? And I just took her drink out of her hand. She had a very similar one. And I went, listen, I went, I didn't throw my drink on you. I went, it was an accident. I went, if I'd wanted to throw my drink on you, I would have done this. Yeah. I just threw <laughs> her drink clean in her face and then put the glass down and we're all like, run, run, run. <laughs> me and all my mates dived out the back fire exit before the doorman could find her and throw her out themselves. And we ran all the way to this big gay club called Powerhouse. Right. Danced all night, drank shots. And the casting director just looked at us about 20 minutes in. He had like glow sticks on, <laughs> no top on, like that, like no box given. And he just turned to me and he went, don't audition. <laughs> he went, don't screen test. <laughs> don't meet anyone from MTV. You'll just be on the show. <laughs> and I was like, you know what, mate? If this is what you want, this is what I am. And I was like, just I Brilliant. I've got nothing to lose. Yeah, definitely. Nothing to lose. Definitely. I'll never look back. <laughs> so once once you made it onto the show and like you know the episodes were going out and stuff, did you ever were you ever aware of being a certain way to kind of maybe get more airtime because you thought if I'm at, if I'm if I'm like that I'm gonna get more time on screen and stuff? Is, is that the way that you looked at it, or were you just like I'm just gonna be me and just do what I do, and if they like it, they like it? I think you'd be li- anyone would be lying if they said that after having seen themselves on TV, there weren't certain elements of themselves that they wanted to minimise. Yeah. And then also other ones that they thought, I like it when I do that. Yeah. Like, do you know I mean, maximise it. Yeah. <clears throat> the first series was so naive and it was so much fun. But what I had that certain other of the cast didn't, initially they got really great at it as the series went on, but it was just the ability to articulate myself. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because I always used to, I, I enjoyed your little interviewing parts. Like, they were they were the best bits for me. Like. The little green screens. Yeah, 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 yeah. They were always my, like, funnest bits because you got to get stuff off your chest. It was essentially quite cathartic yeah. to just sit there and be like, and he said that, who was he thinking? Do you know what I mean, things that you really... And have you, have you always been, like, funny? Because you've got, you can come up with punchlines <laughs> quite easily. No, but you can, you can, you can deliver a punchline quite, quite well. Um, Has that always been a part of your personality? I've always, like, I've always considered myself a bit of an entertainer. Right. And I've never minded, like, sort of, I've always liked to be honest. And I think honesty is funny, because yeah. a lot of people yeah. can't yeah. be like that way. Um, so I think it was difficult for the rest of the cast, initially, to see, um, to see my green screens being used quite a lot. Mm. And not because they were jealous, just because it always looked like I was digging someone out. Right. And I was like, I, I, I was desperate to sort of explain, listen, if yours were as funny as mine, yours would get used. Yeah. But then yeah. that just made us sound like a knob. <laughs> so I had no choice but to take it on the chin. But they got the hang of it really quickly yeah, and yeah. realised what people were looking for and, and what would make the cut and what wouldn't. Yeah. We all changed as the series went on and I knew exactly what the what was going to get used. I've, yeah. You just gotta watch it. You get savvy, don't you? Of course, you get yeah. a little bit savvy, and you get savvy yeah. very quickly because it's you who's out there. So when did you? When did you? How many series in did you leave? Because it felt like you were on it for a while. Oh god, so long, man. I was on for so long. I left all the time. <laughs> Honestly, I was a nightmare. Like hands up, I apologise so much, MTV. I was just such a disaster. It, it was hard, but I think I tried to leave like every series at least, and I think I achieved it on a lot of them. Um, they used to joke I had more lives than a cat. <laughs> but in the end, I eventually took the plunge and didn't come back at all after Series 9. Right. So what was the deciding factor at that point? Like, was it the fact that you just had your fill, you know, you'd done it, or was it you could see pastures new? Like, what was it? Um, I Probably an amalgamation of all those things you just said. Like, yeah. I was 26, which sounds really like young and sprightly, but like in Geordie Shaw years, that made me about 112. <laughs> like there was new people coming up the ranks who were so excited by the prospect of just drinking and making fools of themselves all the time. And I thought, I have done this so many years now. Yeah. And like, I don't want to be that miserable cow in the corner who's like judging other people or looking down my nose or like, I, 
I would, if I want to do something, I want to do it well, and I want to do it because I'm loving it. I wasn't loving it anymore. Yeah. I wanted a serious boyfriend, and I wanted to buy a house, and I wanted to be known for more than what I was known for, <laughs> <laughs> which is sometimes difficult to take. And I think I wanted my mum to be proud of us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she did her best, bless her, but there's not... <clears throat> being the person that my mum is, there was not a lot of moments for her to be proud of when I was playing with Jordy Shaw. <laughs> she was a nice, nice lady. So. The only way, like, watching it, I, it was it's it's entertaining. It's uh, you know it's like it's car crash TV, but it's entertaining. It still is, Rick. Like, still, still entertaining. Is. But the way that I looked at it, I remember thinking, if I was part of that, it feels like you know if you go away to Vegas or Ibiza and you party hard for like five days, it yeah. feels like that, but just the whole time. <laughs> exactly it. Really? Exactly it. Like no downtime. Like None. Just... Zero downtime. No rest. Just like balls to the wall, twenty four seven, manic drinking sessions. And when yeah, when I was twenty two, yeah. right. I was buzzing. Yeah. Like, that was brilliant. Like, I had no boyfriend. I was footloose and fancy free. Yeah. Like, I would have been going out three nights a week and paying for it with my mates anyway. So yeah. the thought of getting it five nights a week for free on MTV <laughs> was a buzz. <laughs> was the best news I could have ever had. But, like, it gets... it Anything, any, too much of a good thing, it is, yeah. is... It becomes monotonous. It becomes the same. And there's this, like... I have this thing where every week we'd go to Bijou on a Monday and I'd be sitting in green screen I'd be like, it's Monday, it means one thing, Bijou, yeah, and, and I remember sitting there saying it one time and just literally felt like I was dead inside. <laughs> I just remember thinking, I can't be excited about this anymore and it's time for someone else to be excited about it because yeah. there's, look at it now, it's what, 15 series in or something yeah. and there's still people who are really thrilled to be part of it and people who love watching it, which is great. And that long may it continue, but for me, the journey was over um, because I wanted to have good memories of it yeah. rather than clinging to something that I knew wasn't right for fear that there was nothing else out there for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting. Um, with regards to like the you know, like your old cast members and stuff, do you guys still keep in contact? Are you still friends? Tell us. Tell, <laughs> be honest. You can tell oh, us all. Is it such a like, such a sensitive subject? This and such a difficult one because I've got zero animosity or hard feelings left. For, to anyone I used to work with, do you know what I mean? Like, I went into Jory Shaw completely unknown, and the things I've managed to get out of it, I would have have surpassed my wildest expectations. And there's so many people who were part of the cast, like past, present, future, whatever, who have done so so well, yeah. and I wish them nothing but the best. I've grown apart from some of them because our lives have taken drastically different paths, yeah. and some of them I don't think were able to be very happy for us and the decisions I made and certain successes that I had, which made being friends with them quite difficult. Yeah. <clears throat> I'll always remember this one instance when I was in the jungle and um, it was Laura Whitmore who was yes. hosting it at the yeah. time, the spin-off show. Big up Laura. Yeah, Lo <laughs> big, love her so much. And um, Gary came out to, um, he was doing PAs out in Australia at the time, so they lumped him in as like, Vicky's pal, come on and have a chat on the show. And he dug us out. <laughs> really? Just done us. Like, no. Um, this isn't the real Vicky you're seeing in there. She's putting on an act. She's the most manipulative person I know. Like, really? all of this. Do you know what? Because watching it from a, a punter's point of view, yep. I felt like we're finally getting to see Vicky for Vicky. And kind of like, you know, that's why I think people loved it so much. And that's why you won, ultimately. Do you know what I mean? Thank you. Well, I'm, that, that's, like, that was my only goal for the jungle. Like, for me, I could have gone out a week in, as soon as eviction started, I thought, oh, whatever it is, I thought, I could go here. Yeah. I've got zero fan base, no one really knows who I am, and if they do, they'll probably think I'm a tosser off the telly who <laughs> used to throw drinks around. So it's quite, like, quite, I'm in, way, in there with legends. But what I didn't expect was to have the people who you thought should have had your back, who'd faced all the same, like, yeah, sort of things as you so. had, hurdles, exactly. Yeah. And should be proud that one of them was getting into mainstream telly, trying to knock us down. So things like that I've struggled to come to terms with <clears throat> and shed quite a lot of tears over the fact that like the relationships aren't there that were anymore. Yeah. At the end of the day, they seem pretty happy yeah. and I'm not struggling. So you can't be friends with everyone all the time, can you? And people outgrow each other. It doesn't mean you don't you dislike each other a lot of the time, but you just go down different paths, like you said. So it's just like a part of life, isn't it, really? Well, that's it. I always say to people when they ask, <clears throat> and I'm not giving them such an in-depth answer as I am with you, but when you, you know when you leave, like, Nat West, or you leave, like, Procter <laughs> & Gamble, or whatever job you leave, like, the hairdressers and that, when you leave that job, like, 
you don't necessarily still ring up Barry from accounts <laughs> and be like, what are you doing the night bars? Like, we're going out or whatever. Because you move on yeah. and there's a new Barry at your new job and there's yeah. different things and, and Barry's not worried about it either. Do you know what? You just mentioned like when you leave your hairdresser. I yeah. left my barber the other day. It was, it was, it was quite emotional. It was quite emotional. Really? With him for four years and, you know. What made the change? Well, he left and went to Nigeria for a little bit mm. and left me kind of high and dry. So I had to find a barber while he was gone. And the new barber was was better. So Well, he's well, done himself there, Rick. Well, yeah, he's done himself. But uh, leave it. That's quite an emotional thing. Have you ever had to like, leave a hairdresser? Oh, I mostly leave on bad terms. Like, make me hair fall out or something. <laughs> it's no, never ideal. <laughs> I've had some hair disasters in my time. What's it like for you being over, like, every kind of celebrity website kind of blog site just seeing your your picture and stories about you most of them not true what is what is that like what is that like because a lot of people that like doing like my breakfast show we talk about stuff that we see like that in the press we're not saying that we believe it but we're like it's rumored to it's probably not true but this is what people are saying the talking what, point yeah what's it like for you Probably, because I know you, sometimes you listen to our show. I she's do, a, she's a big listener. fan. <laughs> um, what's it like for you hearing that or reading that, knowing that what's been written about you is just, it's just not true, it's a load of BS? I think the most difficult part of all of this, like the path I'm on now, is that fame's never appealed to me. Money does. So I want, I want to be rich. <clears throat> I want to be successful. Yeah. If I'm going to do something, I want to be the best at it. If I could have been anything... Like, I literally had no clue what I wanted to do. I just knew if I was going to do it, I was going to do it right. So to find that, essentially, one of the negative byproducts of the path I've chosen is that people think they know you. Yeah. People think you are essentially public property. Um, that your personal life is as much their business as it is yours. And they can say whatever they want about you is, is a downfall. Yeah. And I never want to be ungrateful, ever, because I'm so, so lucky. Mm. I wake up every day and I do something different. I meet someone new. And I love it, and I get amazing perks off the back of this. Yeah. Like it's, I'm so so fortunate, but that is a downside, and I will never come to terms with it. How do you handle it? How do you kind of like suppress it, or how do you just how do you deal with it day to day? Badly, mostly. <laughs> really? <laughs> like I cry a lot. Do like, you? I cry a lot because oh. I am a big girl. I'm a big <laughs> fanny, and I do cry. I, cr I remember I came back. But this is what I'm dealing with, right? I came back last year from Ibiza and I'd got papped on the last day. So like, my hair's like Hagrid's. Like I've sunburned <laughs> patches everywhere. Like I've drank far too much. Eyes like little piss balls in the snow. <laughs> I just look terrible. I'm dancing around the pool with my mates. Obviously, I had a few too many yeah. because the mood that I was pulling in these <laughs> pictures you'd think I was Beyonce but I wasn't they were awful and I remember crying to my mum about it <laughs> literally being like people are going to think I look like that and you must have just got us from a bad angle and I work so hard and yeah, yeah, yeah. Crying. she was like that get a grip for yourself the starving children in Africa <laughs> I was like, shut down yeah I was like you Ooh, they're very unrelated, my <laughs> mum. Do you know what I mean? It's true, but those are wildly different things. Yeah. So I've got a really good support structure of people who do not take my shit. <laughs> my yeah. mum, my sister, my fiancé, my agents, my makeup artist, my stylist, people who I've known for a very long time, predominantly all Northern. Yeah. No disrespect to Southern as they, I'm just saying we keep it very real. <laughs> um, who... Don't they're not sycophantic with us? Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? You mentioned your fiance. Um, congrats, by the way. Thank you. Um, how does he handle it? Because obviously he's like part of it now. He's part of your journey. I th he's very, um, very realistic and just logical. Whereas I'm more emotional. Yeah. So I'm like, it's a guy girl thing. Do you think? I think so. I just thought he was a bit emotionless. <laughs> I'm always telling him off. Guys, we think with logic, with like, that happens, so that means that's going to happen. Women are like, yeah, but that's just amazing. Me feel that. <laughs> <laughs> we are, I mean, stereotypical, but yeah, we yeah, are. Uh, that, that was a massive generalization. <laughs> I apologize. Don't, don't hate him, ladies. He's nice. So um, yeah, he's like just very logical, very <clears throat> methodical about it all. Yeah. Like, for example, I went to the TV Choice Awards. And as I walked into the TV Choice Awards with him on my arm, first public TV um, red carpet appearance with him, the headline on the Daily Mail was Vicky Patterson Steals the Show. Couldn't have been more complimentary about me, like, me dress, me partner, yeah. the hair choice. The, I think there was even a shout out of me guns at one point. Like, <laughs> literally, it was glowing. But as I left, the party and the story the day after I'd had a drink and I was holding it near my chest and of right. course the condensation so I had two little drink marks on my dress 
I was t- chatting to like sketch from Tattoo Fixers and I was chatting to a couple of Love Island not and I was fangirling them because I'd love this series. Yeah. So I'm like all over the place, very animated. So the story the next day was Vicky Patterson looks like she's had a very yeah. good night out. Yeah. And of course I get my agents on the phone like, we're trying to broker big deals for brands with you and you look like that. And I'm yeah. like crying on the phone to John like, why are they out to get me? Why is this? Why is that? And he's like, it's the nature of the beast. Yeah. They're not out to get you. Look at the story they did when you walked in. They're like, you asked for that on the way out. Just look at the state you. They're like, just take a breath Vicky, and realise it's not just you. And I think I need to hear that. It must be hard because you can't, you're just doing what normal people do. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's crazy. Like you're kind of under the microscope. Um, but then do you think, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spin this now. Yeah. Do you think, right, I should continue doing those things essentially being a little bit of a mess up, right? <laughs> because that's what makes us normal and makes us relatable and nice. Or do you think people expect more of me now because I don't lose women for a bit? <laughs> like, where am I? Like, I feel yeah. like transitional. Yeah. I think, I think you should just do you. Whatever makes you happy, I think you should just, you just be you because that's what's got you this far in the first yeah. place. Um, that's what I would say. But I'm not the person that's like, gang, you've got like a, 500 grand contract for this or yeah, for that. Yeah, G2O won't touch you now. You <laughs> yeah, mess exactly, that up. Exactly. You mess it right And up. you did say you're all about the money bit, so like, <laughs> don't mess yeah. that up. <laughs> I always need to tone it down a bit. <laughs> all right, so um, uh, talk to me about your like DVDs and stuff. Like, <laughs> <laughs> How are they going? Which ones are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> any, any? Talk to me about those. Um, so off the back of the success of Geordie Show, I became quite, quite popular <clears throat> Thank you very much, everybody. <laughs> but also quite fat. <laughs> well, there's that famous photo, isn't it? The famous one. We know the mm-hmm. one, like the one that they always show, and that they show you like the before and the after. Mm-hmm. And like, like where were you? What was going on in your life? What was happening? What was that? When was that photo taken? The one where I'm like sucking off a salero. <laughs> <sighs> so bad. Such a bad pick. Um, so I. The weather was, was nice that day. Sunny. It was lovely. Lovely. <laughs> More beer. I think it was it. Is that where it was? Yeah. Right. More beer. Um, I had just came off the back of, I think about five, maybe four or five series of Geordie Shaw. Um, and I'd eventually broke up with Ricky, not you. Um, and I was, I thought I was unhappy in the relationship and I thought it was unhealthy and it was, but there's nothing quite like then being alone Mm. and then, and sort of dealing with the the fallout of that relationship, which was that, would I, I'd isolated myself from a lot of people. Um, I'd kept a lot of secrets from people so nobody understood us. Um, I'd been difficult to work with, which is not something that ever sits well with me. Um, <clears throat> I was really lonely and really sad. And Is that because you were, you were unhappy uh, where you were at Geordie, in Geordie Shore, that, that part of your life, that time? Being in a relationship with Geordie Shore is just so difficult. I, like can, it's, I can't even imagine. Of course, man. Yeah. It's like a single person's gig. <laughs> and it takes a very special relationship to work in there. And God, I've never managed it ever. So hats off to anyone who has. Yeah. But it, it just it didn't work. It was toxic. And I think we would have been toxic outside of the show as well. So that's no disrespect to, the, to them. So some people don't work together. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Um, and we broke up and he was still like still had his six pack still <laughs> looked great was out in like on holiday like chatting up birds having a really nice time and I was huge and miserable and I just thought how is this fair I wasn't the bad guy in this relationship how is it fair so I was like I'm going on holiday with my family and I don't care I'm going to ha- like let me hair down and have a laugh and then when I get back, I will throw myself into like rectifying everything that this relationship and my behaviour during it has sort of managed to tear down. Yeah. Um, and I got papped. It's just as simple as. Yeah. I was in a tiny little resort just outside of Marbella now where my family have got a place and <clears throat> you wouldn't think there'd be any paps. Especially not me. I wasn't really at the time tabloid fodder. Yeah. I was too controversial. I was completely on the cusp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but of course, an overweight girl in a bikini is always tabloid fodder thing is like with regards to like the the, the before and after pictures they always do mm. there's a remarkable difference but yeah. you weren't like it, it wasn't like crazy like me and melbourne were like well yeah, she's got a bit of curves <laughs> 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 yeah, was, we were like cool it's just a new look <laughs> she tries something different <laughs> it's i think it's just shocking because it's how you see yourself yeah. And like, as any girl who's ever gained weight or been in a relationship, got comfortable, whatever, you don't think you're that much bigger. Yeah. You still wear like a size 12 leggings with <laughs> so much stretch and then you just think, yeah, I'm fine. Like, you avoid clothes shopping, you avoid mirrors. Like, 
I just got myself into a place where I was hiding from the fact that I was a bit unhappy and I'd gained some weight. And I don't think for any single second I was huge or like wildly obese or anything. I was just uncomfortable, Rick. And that's what it boils down to is I wasn't happy. Yeah. Um, but listen, I don't regret it. And everything happens for a reason because those pictures grabbed the attention of Universal and one particular lady who is a very successful in the world of fit the fitness DVDs. She's had the number one selling fitness DVD for about the last 20 years. Yeah. Um, and she must literally have big hawk eyes looking for those to, <laughs> like me in magazines yeah. and she approached us pitched the idea of a fitness dvd and i bit the hand off because i thought to myself hang on you're gonna it's gonna literally be my job to get fit and healthy which is a dream exactly yeah. and get wicked pictures of me out there so no one <laughs> like no one remembers those pictures anymore i was like yes yeah, snatch the yeah. hand off yeah and it was a grueling i got six months to do it six months to lose three stone how tough was that ridiculous really Especially because somewhere in between that, I went out and filmed the first series of X on the Beach as well. <laughs> which was, of course, again, mini Geordie show in the yeah, sun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I was, I had a personal trainer out there and I was having to get up at like five, six o'clock in the morning, even though we weren't going to bed at three, four. Oh like, my word. I'm trying to be entertaining. I'm trying to like, because this is MTV's first attempt into something new. Yeah. They'd really pinned it on me. They were like, the lads are funny. The lads are good looking. The girls are gorgeous haven't got as much personality as we would have liked can you bring the bants and I was like yeah of course I'll bring the bants <laughs> like I couldn't bring the bants and be training as well I was really really struggled <laughs> so it was difficult but um I got my head down and um I did it and it's been one of the best things I've ever done mm. discovering and really getting my he- head around health and fitness yeah so that yeah. was my first fitness selling dvd first of all um, and I believe it was the number one selling DVD. Darling. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> in the country. Knocked minions off. You were Harry Potter it. didn't start yeah, a chance. I remember. I remember. <laughs> it's absolutely smashing it. So then, how do you get your head around, like, off the back of all of that success and um, notoriety, people knowing you, and then you get, like, you know, you've got, like, I don't know, four million plus followers on, on social media. What is that like? How do you get your head around that? From going from almost, you know, obscurity to just, like, I'm, I'm famous. I don't think about it. it truth, truthfully, to tell you the God's honest truth, I think if I sat and thought about it, I would either scare myself or I would become someone who's very interested in themselves. Yeah. And I don't, I don't really want to have either of those things happen. I do what I'm doing because I like it. Like for example, you could... You could become very interested and very addicted to this whole world and stuff and just knock about with people because you know it's going to get your picture taken or this, that and the other. Whereas I tend to find, I tend to knock about with people that I like, regardless of what jobs they do or how long I've known them or whatever. Um, I stay very close to my family. I've picked, I I mean, I don't know if he picked me or I picked him or picked each other, but I've picked a partner who's not in the public eye. Um... I just haven't got tickets on myself, Ricky. Did you do that on purpose? Did you think to yourself, I'm going to stay away from someone that's like, you know, well known? I mean, I can't say I did that because I had my fair share, didn't I? <laughs> um, I did definitely try. <clears throat> no, I, I didn't try. I, I, I believe the one thing in life that you can't plan and you shouldn't sort of try and like sort of um, predict is love. Yeah. You fall into love and that is what I truly believe. So I've had people who were in the public eye, I've had people who weren't, I've had people who probably wanted to be. <laughs> like I've, do you know what I mean? Who wanted to be? Um, you do you know what? I've had so many people that I've gone out with and then I've m- miraculously, ha- however this has happened, but they've ended up going on to like, say, the next series of X on the Beach. Or right. And I'm not in it. I'm yeah. not there. Like, they've just been spotted on my Instagram. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Yeah, That's yeah. it. Yeah. And I think to myself, well, you probably got what you wanted out of that, didn't yeah. you? Yeah. All right, so Vix, you've done Loose Women, you've done uh, I'm a Celeb, Get Me Out of Here Now. Um, did you know that you wanted to get into presenting before it actually happened? Was that something you thought, I could do that? Yeah, so once I'd started Geordie Shaw, um, in, in the same way that you gave me a nice compliment before about me little green screen things, lots of producers were paying us the same type of ones, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you'd know how to deliver a line, you can speak <laughs> you know I mean I can articulate myself correctly but it's, it's amazing how many people that do stuff that can't deliver deliver stuff because even even James said that he worked with you a couple of times and was like she's out of everyone she's one of the ones that could probably do that for a living 
I remember as soon as I'd finished series one, I got in MTV's ear, started asking if I could present the news for them. Just, yes. a, just a guest slot, yeah, yeah, do you know what I mean? Yeah. But I had, by that point, my eyes on the prize. I thought, if I'm going to do this, and everyone in Newcastle's going to call us worse than shit, <laughs> and like, I'm going to be like, heralded as like, the, the entire re like, reason that Britain's breaking down <laughs> in the press, then I'm going to get something out of this. So yeah, I started grafting, um, started sort of, I would, I would say that, like all of me, um, green screen bits is like practice auditions like yeah. working out like how yeah exactly how to deliver a line like how to remember things it was all just practice for us yeah. um, and I think I had a natural ability to do it which made it easier and I liked it as yeah. well so from yeah from the minute I started doing any TV I knew I wanted to be a TV presenter do you know what I've got from you like sitting like just chatting to you today and when we when I met you before is that you're quite savvy with behind the camera as well like we did some stuff on celebrity. Yeah. Your <laughs> celebrity was to remember people's names, right? Because yeah. you were like... It's important. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. very important. Yeah. I always remember reading Simon Cowell's autobiography and he says um, that one of his, like one of his big talents, he doesn't consider himself to be a talented man at all, despite how rich and hardworking he is, is that he remembers everybody's name, yeah. whether it be the runner or it be the, the, the head, the like SP of the show. Because... You don't, you don't under you can never underestimate how that makes someone else feel. Yeah. Do you know what oh, I mean? It is really powerful. It goes it's such a long way. Nice as well, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. It costs absolutely nothing to be nice. And I just sort of think there'll be one day when no one remembers my name at all. Yet Jimmy, who brought me my cup of tea on celebability, is now the big producer at ITV, and he'll remember that I, le yeah. I learned his name. He'll yeah. remember that I was nice. So so true. So, so always true. always make sure that you you be nice to everyone on the way up because you'll meet them again on the way back down. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so something that a lot of our female people watching are going to want to know, uh, how's the wedding planning going? Hey, <laughs> it's coming along quite nicely. We, are, are you going to be like a bridezilla, you bridezilla? I mean, the, it's, oh, it's pretty high chances, isn't it? <laughs> like, gauging on my past history, yeah, I think it's possible that I could lose it at some point. I'm very temperamental. Um, we've been quite chilled out so far um we have set a date right. so we're gonna get married next july really yeah yep. we're not messing around <laughs> um he's from a big family who love a good party and so am i so we're going for um a little understated three-day number oh yeah wicked are you serious <laughs> yeah. three days three days that's not a wedding that's a festival <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's what we're calling it the nobles festival i'll end up being i'll be vicky noble wicked so yeah, we're really excited. Um, but in the meantime, we have the engagement party to plan, which has taken all of our energies. Yeah. Um, and I sort of feel like one, I, f I feel like that's like a soft launch. Yeah. Like um, we have about 200 guests that we can invite to the wedding, and yet 250 we're going to have at the engagement party. Right, okay. So I'm thinking it's an audition for everybody. <sighs> it's like, it's like when you get called up to England and you like don't make the <laughs> don't make the final team. It's savage, babe. Honestly, we are we are being really cutthroat with this. So we're gonna see how everyone acts. We're gonna you bring a good present. Oh, you're in. Who um, gets drunk quickest? Who can handle their liquor? <laughs> I mean, it, if that's what we're playing, I, I won't get invited to the wedding. <laughs> so what about the uh, the Vicky P Hindu? How's that gonna go down? That's that's gotta be big, surely. Legendary. Yeah. Huge. <laughs> Huge. I want a couple. I think, I think, why not? I'm only going to do this once. That's standard now, though, I think, isn't it? Like, most people, yeah. like, do one where everyone can kind of come. Mm -hmm. You do one where it's, like, a bit more, like, yeah, exclusive, like, really close friends and stuff. Mm -hmm. I think that's quite, that's fair. I feel like, more, like, how I'll have to work it is I'm, I'm looking at the possibility of three, right? Right. I'll let you in on this right. little secret here. This is just, just spitballing, right? <laughs> so three. So number one, for like grannies, family, yeah. aunties, blah, 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 who, if they truly saw the debauchery <laughs> that happened at my hen do, wouldn't come to the wedding. They'd be disgusted, absolutely mortified. So like something like a sassy spa day with yeah. maybe afternoon tea yeah, afterwards. Yeah, nice. yeah. We can pontificate about feminism and eat cucumber sandwiches, <laughs> if that's what grandma wants. <laughs> Um, so that's that's number three possibly. Yeah, that's number, that's number three. Number two, yeah. I'm looking at something in the UK, like big, but like something everyone can go to, all inclusive, all yeah. encompassing, yeah. like a big, like nice rowdy meal, um, maybe somewhere like circus, yeah, and then just like a massive club night. Yeah, I will probably wear a crown. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know, just, just came to say I fancy a crown. It's been a while. Why not? And then obviously. Ibiza. Ibiza, yeah. A week. Standard. Only the dedicated. <laughs> Only the strong. <laughs> 
Like, <laughs> this is Vicky's Hendo. Yeah. You need to know it's going to be aggressive. <laughs> Bring your A game or stay at home, bitches. YOLO. <laughs> As you know, here on The Motto, we like to, you know, give back. We're all about charity. Um, so the money that we get from uh, sponsors, we like to give some of that money back to a charity of our guest choice. So what charity would you like us to donate to on your behalf? These are money? lovely little sausages. <laughs> <laughs> um, for me, it would be the, the Chronicle Sunshine Fund. It's a charity that raises money for disabled children in the northeast. I'm actually a patron of the Amazing. charity. Um, and my mum is their managing fund director. Really? Yeah. So oh. it's my, my mum's little charity. So close to your heart then? Oh God, so much, yeah. Breaks me a little heart whenever I, whenever I do anything for them. They're a nice bunch. Okay. All right. So that's pretty much it. We've got like a few questions that we ask every single guest that we have on. Okay. Um, you ready for those? Hit me. All right. So the first one is, what is the biggest misconception about you that people have about you? Um, it's difficult. Coming from reality TV, there is a lot flying around. I despise the one that I'm stupid. I really hate being misconstrued as thick. People think you're thick? People bundle me in with reality TV in general. And listen, I, I don't think that's fair because I know loads of people in reality TV who aren't. Yeah. Like, Joey Essex, whatever you want to think or call him, he has made millions. He's my number one example of when people are like, oh, he's thick dumb. <laughs> he just bought a house the other day for like, X amount of million pounds. Like, he can't be that dumb. Like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Ask his bank balance how shit he is. Like, do you yeah, think he cares? 100%. I love doing I don't like that one. It's difficult. It's difficult for me to, to see, yeah, to be conceived as that. And then also, I don't, I don't know how I feel about the one that I'm really tough. Because I am quite a strong, independent woman. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I'm human. Yeah, of course. And I'm very emotional. And inside, I'm only little. I'm this tiny little baby inside, like such a little, such a big girl pants, that these these things that people say, whether it be social media or whether it be in the press or whether it be on the main online comments, <laughs> which I know I shouldn't fucking read. Well, don't read them. Never even read them. I, even I don't know. I'm like, I'm, not, I'm nobody. Do you know what I mean? Like, don't read the comments. Do not read, do not read, read the, the comments. comments. Read. But just take that hungover tea where you're like, you know what? I looked good last night. I'm going to yeah. read these. And then before you know it, oh my God. <laughs> You hate yourself. It's just awful. <laughs> so yeah. So anyone who meets me, please know that I am very sensitive, okay. and I would promote. I'd like a cuddle. <laughs> That's okay. Hugs welcome. <laughs> um, next up, when was the last time you did something for the first time? That's a good one. <laughs> um, did something for the first time. Huh. Well, I've got a buzzy. You stop me, yeah. <laughs> oh, how about this though? Cool. On Sunday, I just got back from filming in Spain. Been out there for two weeks. I'm shattered. I'm knackered. The thought of a lot of physical contact is not high on the list of our, <laughs> Like just human contact, you know what I mean? I'm right. like, mm. So I ordered all three of my meals that day from Deliveroo. Did you? And I've never done that before. Three meals. Well, like breakfast, lunch, dinner. <laughs> <laughs> So like I had, I spoke to nobody for a day. Nice, nice. Some days you just need to, I feel like that when I get back from like a triple break, yeah. like that abroad or whatever, you just want to just like, just bury yourself away. Duvet day. Duvet and day all yeah. day. Yeah, 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 love that. So I avoided physical contact, and <laughs> human contact of any kind, and that's not like me. Um, next one. Uh, who is the one person that you think that we should interview as a guest on the motto? Oh. Like your um, recommendation. Okay, people I admire or like or love or just... Do you know who I love talking to? Go on. There's two people who I think would be brilliant. Eamon Holmes is yeah. amazing. Yeah. He's so warm and witty and kind. And the stories he has to tell, like, I can't even... Be I've got no, no experience compared to him. Yeah. Like, the stories he tells you, and he's so loose-lipped as well. Is he? Yeah, man. Like, you'll get some really good nuggets off him. Okay, and all he, right. He's just, yeah, he's, he's fab, and he's, he's mad bitchy. He loves it, man. <laughs> Is he really? He's so bitchy, yeah. Eamon's right. the one. Write that one down, Bones. Eamon. Oh, Eamon secondly, Holmes. I really like Rylan. I love Ray. You can't not like, love Ray. Like, like you? he's just so brilliant at what he does, and you have to, again, I admire him so much. Like... That moment when he cried on Nicole Scherzinger's sofa. It, did, was it was so funny, wasn't it? But did anyone think he was coming back from that? No. no one did. No. Everyone was like, right, you're done. Look at him now. Yeah. And that is, I love that. I love people who change people's perceptions of I him. Love, I think it's, it's either his Instagram page or his Twitter page, and he's got as his caption, started out as the joke, 
and I'm still laughing. But I'm still laughing. It's brilliant. Like, so, so clever. That's it. So clever. And he's a very clever man. Like, he wrote his own autobiography all himself, you know. Yeah, he's talented. Like, and he's done it by keeping memoirs. You must know you're something or you've got something to give. Yeah. Like, I've never, ever wrote anything down. I really <laughs> didn't think any, anything was going to come to me. But there's a, a real, I've got a real admiration for someone who gets tickets on themselves, who yeah. says, I can do something with my life and I've got this. So just on the off chance, I'm yeah. making notes. Yes, Rylan. Yeah. Got my good respect one. for that. Good one. Good one. Rylan is a good one. And finally, the big one. Yeah. What, Vix, is your motto? I really struggled when you asked us this. <laughs> Because I've got a couple, um, and I want to just give you one, and it'd be hard-hitting and firm. So, I'm going to go with, always try to have courage, be kind, and not be a knob. <laughs> That's what I live brilliant, by. Brilliant, brilliant. Listen, <laughs> you've been absolutely amazing. Up top. Thanks, Vic. Love you, Vicks. Absolute pleasure. <laughs>